Hello, everyone. This is the prettier half of the Welcome to Your Doom show, Atul Katru, here to bring you another side quest review, this time for The Dark Tower. And no, not Stephen King's original series of books. And also no, not the 2017 movie starring Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey, directed by Nicolaj Arcel. What I'm going to be talking about today is what I consider to be the best starting place for anyone who was just getting into the Dark Tower mythos. The Marvel limited series, The Gunslinger Born. I'm actually recording this in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, where most of us are forced to stay home all day, every day. This is actually one of the reasons I wanted to record this episode. The Dark Tower is a massive series to take on. It's eight books strong. I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> it takes me forever to read a book. I love reading. I love reading fiction stories, big fiction stories, but when I choose to read one, usually it takes me many, many months to finish. Uh, so, you know, when I see a series that's eight books long, I, I take, I pause and I'm like, do I, do I want to get into this? Uh, because that could easily be just like a year of my life. <laughs> um, but if you have ever felt this way, if you ever felt that the Dark Tower series is a little bit too daunting to take on, fear not. The Marvel series of Dark Tower graphic novels, in particular the first graphic novel collection called The Gunslinger Born, are here to provide the best and easiest entry point into the mythology and might just be the best cure for those COVID blues. This may come as a surprise to some listeners, but my first exposure to the Dark Tower was not the original Stephen King novels. It was actually the Marvel series of adaptations, starting with The Gunslinger Born. Um, and the book itself has, a, has an interesting set of credits. For example, there is a creative director and executive director credit going to Stephen King. And there is a plotting and consultation credit going to Robin Firth. And there is a script credit going to Peter David. And the art credit goes to Jay Lee and Richard Eisenhoff. So why is this interesting? Um, Stephen King looks to have had direct creative influence on the project. And Robin Firth was Stephen King's personal assistant for a time and is credited with creating encyclopedic volumes on the Dark Tower called The Dark Tower, A Concordance. And I think there are two volumes of this. So that's among other works uh, she has done related to the mythology. I recall reading that King would turn to Robin for her extensive knowledge of the mythology whenever he returned to writing The Dark Tower over its 22-year publishing history. This is all to say that this Marvel series... Um, the first issue of which was released February 7th, 2007, is steeped in the mythology of the Dark Tower. All of the subject matter expertise is guided by veteran comic book writer Peter David, who manages to streamline the massive amount of source of material into something that is easily digestible and is paced perfectly for the graphic novel format. This is coupled with Jay Lee and Richard Eisenhoff's evocative art, have produced a beautiful, well-told story that makes for not only a great jumping-on point for anyone looking to get their Dark Tower experience started, but also a damn fine comic book. The Gunslinger Born is actually primarily an adaptation of the fourth King novel called Wizard in Glass. That novel is primarily a flashback of the titular gunslinger's past, which makes it the perfect story to tell since uh, chronologically it is actually what occurs first in the timeline of the Dark Tower. But since this story, along with a continued series of graphic novel entries, comes straight from the original creative team, it perfectly complements the original Dark Tower novels. So while The Gunslinger Born, the book that we're talking about now, is primarily an adaptation of the fourth King novel, Wizard and Glass, 
the subsequent graphic novels in the Marvel series actually fill in a lot of the gaps and flesh out a lot of the characters that the uh, a lot of the characters that are referenced in the mainline King novels, which that's which really makes it a treat to read because if you read the Marvel series first and then get into the King graphic no sorry get into the King mainline novels, you will really appreciate more of those references and all of that world building, which to be honest, if I were reading the King novels straight out without having read the Marvel series, I would have been just a, like a little bit lost uh, and maybe a bit overwhelmed with some of those references. But since I had some of that background, knew who some of these characters were and what they had gone through, um, references to things like the Battle of Jericho Hill or the Fall of Gilead or you know those types of things, uh, they actually have uh, a reference in my mind and visuals from the comic to accompany them. So it actually, I found uh, reading the Marvel series actually enriched the experience of reading the Stephen King mainline novels. The story of the gunslinger born chronicles Roland Deschain's rise from a trainee to a gunslinger in Gilead. From there, we follow Roland's fellow young gunslingers, his quartet, as it's referred to in the series, on their very first adventure to a town called Hambry to strike a blow against John Farson, who is basically terrorizing his way toward Gilead. So just a word on the gunslingers and the mythology in this. It's all explained sort of really, really well in the graphic novel and also the mainline series by Stephen King. But just to give you kind of an idea of what we're dealing with here, the gunslingers are kind of this, uh, uh, like, a, like, like knights in this universe. So it's very Arthurian in, uh, in its construction, or even Jedi-like. So after these guys get to Hambry, what follows is essentially uh, a game of wits, which uh, in between uh, the Katet and John Farson's men, which includes uh, conspiracies, witches, ill-fated love, dark magic, tears in the fabric of reality, psychic powers, and bullets. Lots and lots of bullets. What I really, what I really love about this story was that it managed to balance the more bonkers, supernatural, mythological elements with real human character development and practical plotting. For every all-seeing magic orb that is encountered there is some sort of matching political intrigue or plan of attack or strategy or detective work uh, believe it or not that makes practical sense and really like grounds the story it solidifies the fact that there isn't an all-encompassing magic silver bullet for this scenario uh, and strategy and a sharp mind and even science still still have a lot to say in the outcome of the story. I cannot emphasize this enough. You do not need to be a Stephen King Dark Tower groupie to be able to enjoy this story. In fact, the manner in which the tale is told gives the right amount of plot, character, and world building to the reader, striking that beautiful balance as to both not overwhelm you or bore you to tears. There was very clearly a lot of thought put into how to present this intricate universe to a first-time reader. One thing to note here is the manner of which this story is told. It takes place in a world that sort of mixes a west, like a western, uh, with gothic horror and science fiction with like ancient technology, but there's also magic. So it's this really interesting mashup of genres. So since it's this real mix of genres and it has this very lived in feel, um, also like the delivery of the dialogue, it's all very operatic. Like I said before, it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, Arthurian or like Shakespearean in its delivery. It's very, it's very dramatic. And that really does match the visuals as well. So if that's something to be prepared for. There's going to be a lot of sort of colloquialisms that might not immediately make sense, but as they get used in the dialogue and in the captions, 
you start to infer their meaning. Uh, and like I said, it's very sort of dramatic and big. And uh, I really did enjoy that. I may, maybe that might turn some people off and and it's or sort of like uh, all extremely dramatic uh, delivery, but I actually really enjoyed that. Just like this really lived in place. You really feel like you're reading an ancient legend um, rather than fiction that you know was released in in the 2000s for example now let's talk about the thing that originally drew me to buy this first hardcover book and many of the subsequent uh graphic novels it was the art man let's not kid ourselves um i judged this book by its cover and i'm glad i did because uh you know jay lee and richard eisenhoff have created in my mind the definitive look of the Dark Tower. Well, and, and, and that's not to say I like Jay Lee's work all the time because I've liked his work in the past. He has an extremely distinct style. It's very dramatic poses, usually some like fog or mist is involved. Um, and uh, the, they're usually profile shots and uh, deeply shadowed or thick lines on the faces being sort of predominant. And um, I don't think this style really works for me all the time. Uh, case in point, I believe uh, in the last few years, he did a run on the Batman Superman ongoing series. And he applied the exact same style to that series. And I was looking at it and I'm like, ah, it's not quite working for me. It's certainly not bad. It just didn't feel like it you know, struck the right tone to match the superhero story that was being told in that case. All of that being said, his style works like gangbusters here. Uh, the pencils and Eisenhoff's dramatic colors breathe life into all of the characters and locales of the story. Uh, the two-page splashes in this story are absolutely breathtaking and complement the world perfectly with the dramatic, almost Arthurian legend type storytelling. The sequential art, the action is also really well played out. In particular, the paneling on Roland's final test to become a gunslinger where he has to uh, fight uh, Court, his teacher, and beat him in combat to earn his guns. Uh, I found that to be super kinetic. All of these panels are seared into my memory. And it was these panels and these characters that I saw when I finally got around to reading King's original novels. Uh, you know, truthfully, I, I can't say enough about the art. I, I want some of these pages printed out in large format and just all over my walls. They are absolutely gorgeous. Marvel has gone on since the Gunslinger Born initial graphic novel limited series to actually publish more stories from the Dark Tower mythos. The Gunslinger Born itself was seven issues long. The story actually continues in many graphic novel collections which follow that, that tell the story of what happens after the adventure in Hambry concludes and it continues to the fall, of the, uh, the fall of Gilead and ultimately leads right into the start of the first King novel, The Gunslinger. All of these stories are alluded to in the original King novels but are expanded here in glorious detail. And as I mentioned before, Stephen King and Robin Firth are so involved uh, that this, is, this all fits perfectly together as one cohesive story. Nothing here feels like fan fiction. Um, the series goes on to uh, even adapt the drawing of the three, the second novel in the Dark Tower series. Marvel has lost uh, the publishing rights, unfortunately, to the series in 2011. But uh, has since been the, the publishing rights themselves have actually been picked up by a company called Gallery 13, which has been uh, republishing the series since 2019, I believe. So folks who are interested uh, should be able to find copies of the collected editions fairly easily. I own and have read the first six graphic novel collections in, the, in hardcover and can say the quality is consistent. There are two uh, beautiful hardcover omnibus editions out there that collect the series in its entirety, along with originally 
published bonus material that came out with each of the individual issues, also with new bonus material generated specifically for the omnibus editions. The omnibus editions, say that 10 times fast. Uh, each collection consists of two hardcover books in a beautiful slipcase. Uh, one of the books is the graphic novels themselves, and the other one is an entire book dedicated to the bonus features. I would absolutely love to get my hands on this. It's, uh, you know, sketches, original pencils, original sequence art, original scripts, interviews, all of that wonderful stuff. I really would love to dig into that stuff. Um, I looked it up on Amazon.ca and it's uh, a measly $747. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately, um, I guess it's not being uh, published anymore. Um, I see some lower prices on eBay, so I may potentially chase it down there, but I can't spend $747 on a comic book. Uh, even for a comic book collector like myself, that is completely ludicrous. Um, here's hoping that Gallery 13 reprints the Omnibus editions and brings the price down a little bit so I can finally get my hands on it. And that's it. That's that's my take on, on the, the Gunslinger Born. Um, I hope some folks uh, chase at least this first graphic novel down just to give it a try. The Dark Tower may seem or feel like may feel like a massive undertaking, but the Gunslinger Born makes entering the mythology a bit easier and tells a very entertaining story along the way, matched with great, great visuals that if you read The Gunslinger Born and read the subsequent graphic novels and then read the, the first novel in the King series called The Gunslinger, uh, it really adds a beautiful layer of context to all of the references that come out of that uh, and also adds great visuals, mind you. It was really the, the visuals from the comic book that I was seeing when I was reading the novels. Uh, so until next time, Long days and pleasant nights, listeners.